Hello friends, welcome to another video by Visual Designers. Myself, Dr. Dimpal Dalal, and today we will discuss about a very common disease occurring in monsoon. While rain after a hot and humid day can be a desirable thing, the fact cannot be denied that rain could bring in some rainy season diseases. During monsoon, our immune system is weakened and this results in many diseases. This climate change causes different types of monsoon diseases such as mosquito borne diseases like malaria, dengue, etc. and food and water borne diseases like cholera, typhoid, etc. So today we will look at one of these diseases and that is typhoid. In this video we will discuss its causes, symptoms, complications, prevention and some of the effective homeopathic remedies. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Disclaimer Typhoid fever is an acute, life-threatening illness caused by the bacteria. It usually spreads through contaminated food or water. An estimated 11 to 20 million people get sick from typhoid and between 1,28,000 to 1,61,000 people die from it every year. Typhoid risk is higher in population that lack access to safe water and adequate sanitization. Poor communities and vulnerable groups including children are at highest risk. So let us see what causes typhoid fever and how it spreads. Typhoid fever is caused by dangerous bacteria called Salmonella typhi. Once Salmonella typhi bacteria enters human body through contaminated food or water, they multiply and spread into the bloodstream. Once the person is infected, he or she can spread it to others through the fecal oral route. This means that Salmonella typhi is passed in the feces and sometimes in the urine of infected people. If you eat food that has been handled by someone who has typhoid fever and who hasn't washed hands carefully after using the toilet, you can become infected. In many cases, most people become infected by drinking contaminated water. Now let us proceed to the symptoms of typhoid fever. Sign and symptoms are likely to develop gradually, often appearing 1 to 3 weeks after exposure to the bacteria and the duration of illness is about 3 to 4 weeks. Sign and symptoms of early illness include fever that starts low and increases daily, possibly reaching as high as 104.9 degree Fahrenheit. Then patient may suffer from headache, weakness and fatigue. There is muscle aches, sweating and dry cough. Patient suffers from loss of appetite and weight loss. Patient suffers from stomach pain and the stomach is extremely swollen. There can be diarrhea or constipation and skin rashes. Without treatment, patient may become delirious and lie motionless and exhausted with eyes half closed in what is known as the typhoid state. Life-threatening complications often develop at this time. In some people, signs and symptoms may return up to two weeks after the fever has subsided. A small number of people who recover from typhoid fever continue to harbor the bacteria. These are known as chronic carriers. They no longer have sign or symptoms of the disease. However, they still shed the bacteria in their feces and are capable of infecting others. With quick and proper treatment, nearly all people recover from typhoid fever. But without treatment, some people may not survive complications of the disease. So let us now see what complications can arise due to typhoid fever. First and the most serious complication of typhoid fever is intestinal bleeding or holes in the intestine. They usually develop in the third week of illness. In this condition, the small intestine or large bowel develops a hole. Contents of the intestine leak into the stomach and can cause severe stomach pain, nausea, vomiting and sepsis. Other possible complications include inflammation of the heart muscles that is also known as myocarditis. Another complication is inflammation of the lining of the heart and valves known as endocarditis. Patient may suffer from infection of major blood vessels known as mycotic aneurysm. 
देर कैन बी निमोनिया पेशेंट कैन सफर फ्रॉम इन्फ्लमेशन ऑफ पेनक्रियाज नोन एज पेनक्रियाटाइटिस देर कैन बी किडनी और ब्लैडर इन्फेक्शन इन्फेक्शंस एंड इन्फ्लमेशन ऑफ मेम्ब्रेन्स एंड फ्लूड सराउंडिंग योर ब्रेन और स्पाइनल कॉर्ड नोन एज मेनेंजाइटिस कैन बी द कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ टाइफॉइड फीवर एंड लास्टली पेशेंट कैन सफर फ्रॉम साइकेट्रिक प्रॉब्लम सच एज डेलीरियम हेलोसिनेशन एंड पैरानाइड साइकोसिस मोस्ट ऑफ अस वुड कंसिडर टाइफॉइड एज अ डेंजरस डिसीज बट देर इज वन आस्पेक्ट विच मेक्स इट मोर डेंजरस एंड दैट इज इट्स स्लो प्रोग्रेस in early stages its symptoms appear to be quite trivial and because of this the symptoms are ignored if diagnosed at the right time typhoid can be controlled easily and effectively this makes the investigation of typhoid very important so let us now see which investigations can be performed to diagnose this disease diagnosis in the first week is difficult but a variety of laboratory studies assist in making the diagnosis such as blood culture vidal test stool culture bone marrow culture etc now let us see how can we prevent and control typhoid fever avoid drinking untreated water drink only bottled water or boiled water improve sanitization Frequent hand washing before eating or preparing food and after using the toilet is the best way to control infection. Avoid raw fruits and vegetables because raw fruits and vegetables may have been washed in contaminated water. Try to avoid food from street vendors. Choose hot foods. Avoid food that is stored or served at room temperature. Steaming hot foods are best. Another way to prevent typhoid fever is vaccination. Two vaccines have been used for many years to prevent typhoid. A new typhoid conjugate vaccine with longer lasting immunity was pre-qualified by WHO in December 2017. Now let us proceed to the management of typhoid fever through effective homeopathic remedies. There are many remedies for typhoid fever in homeopathy, but here we will discuss some of the commonly used remedies only. first and the most effective remedy is bactericia tinctoria it is the specific remedy for typhoid fever in any stage it should be given as soon as typhoid is suspected when the patient suffers from chilliness high fever and body ache and he has become very weak then this remedy can be used patient can also say that in whatever position he rested upon he would have a lot of pain in that part If this is the case then one can use this remedy. Some physical symptoms can be found while examining the patient such as unbearable offensiveness from the patient's breath and sweat. Patient's tongue is dry and cracked and has coating on it. If any of this symptom is found in the patient then this remedy can be given to him. If the patient starts having psychotic complications such as not being able to think about anything or falling asleep in the middle of the answer then this remedy can be used now there are many people who suffer from relapsing typhoid fever they become very weak and very thirsty at the time of fever and at the end of the fever the patient gets cold sweat if there is such a condition then the medicine named arsenic album can give a good result some patient lies very quietly in the bed does not want to move to speak or open eyes because little motion make the patient's condition worse in such a condition a medicine named bryonia alba can be considered also if during typhoid fever the patient has great thirst for large quantity of cold water at long intervals and the patient also complains of constipation then this medicine can give good results Just as we have seen that bryonia can be given if there is constipation during typhoid similarly if the patient has diarrhea from the beginning of the typhoid then a medicine named rostox gives a good result many patients get fever blisters around the mouth and chin and they also become very restless during fever they cannot stay in one position and must change position often to obtain relief from pain If there is such a situation we can also use rostox here. Many patients get shivering in the evening with heat. During fever they feel very thirsty 
and they drink small quantities of water at a time and after fever they get cold sweat along with this there is a sensation as of numbness in hands and feet and they also suffer from constipation and increased urination if there is such a condition then one can consider a medicine named lycopodium so friends this is all about typhoid fever if you have found value in this video please don't forget to like and share it with others if you have not subscribed to our channel please do so now please provide your valuable feedback thanks for watching bye